What is up everybody? I'm No Lux Given and today we are going to be taking another look at Deadpool in Marvel Snap and I'm calling this deck Deadpool Mark II because Marvel Snap recently made some changes to some cards in the game including a change to Hulkbuster. And I talked about this card a little bit in my previous video but now when you attach a Hulkbuster to a Deadpool and then destroy it, it only costs one to replay rather than costing you four. This means that we can make much bigger Deadpools than we previously could, and there's some other synergies going on in this deck too with a new card that I opened up, and that is Taskmaster. On reveal, set this card's power equal to the power of the last card that you played. So that actually works really, really well with Hulkbuster, and it is also a great turn six play alongside Deadpool. You slam down like a 20 power Deadpool or something crazy like that uh, because we're getting even bigger Deadpools now that it works with Hulkbuster and then you also get to uh, slam down a 20 power Taskmaster in the same turn. So we can do some really cool stuff with the deck. There's some other synergies too with Carnage alongside Taskmaster. Uh, unfortunately, I do not currently have Venom, so we are unable to play that, but there's definitely some other ways you can make this deck strong too with stuff like Venom and Death. This was my first game with the new deck and things went pretty well. We've got Nakia and Okoye in the opening hand, which is always super strong, even with the new Okoye nerf. I'm just looking for any ways to pump up Deadpool with the deck, so still playing it, even though it won't pump up Deadpool in this case because we already have Deadpool and Hulkbuster in our hand. Wakanda does make things a little bit tricky for us. One, it means that we can't kill my opponent's Sunspot, but it is also going to mean that we can't put our Deadpool in that location because we won't be able to destroy it. And I'm realizing that we can't put Deadpool in Wakanda, and then I'm thinking that I might want to try to win Mojo World as well. So I throw the Okoye in Mojo World. Honestly, probably should have just thrown Okoye in either of the two locations. It's really important to have a location where you can play Deadpool. And when you have the Hulkbuster, you want to be able to play it in a solo lane. So probably should have just avoided the Mojo World for now. And as our third location, we get Kamaratage. So we are going to get double Nakia and then hopefully we can throw this Hulkbuster onto the Deadpool. I'm actually not sure at the time of this game how Hulkbuster works with Kamartage. So we are about to find out as that is where we are going to play the Deadpool. I figured there's a chance that maybe all of them would combine and be able to do something really crazy for us. So I'm going to play Deadpool and the Hulkbuster in Kamartage. I thought maybe it would all meld into one 14 power Deadpool potentially, but turns out it's just a 50-50. So we have to get lucky here. My opponent's going to play a Deathlock into the Mojo World. Eh, probably should have done something different. We are playing up against a bot here, and we are going to get super lucky with the Hulkbuster attaching onto Deadpool. So now we can just Killmonger the Deadpool. It will return as a 26 power card, and that is obviously really sweet. So we just have to decide if we want to try to battle in Wakanda or if we want to go in Mojo World with Bucky and Killmonger, and I'm just going to throw them in Mojo World so that way we can potentially win that location easily. So this will pop open our Deadpool and give us a 26 power Deadpool, and from here the best possible draw in our deck is going to be Taskmaster, and we are going to get lucky enough to draw that as well on our next turn. So pretty good first showing for the deck. Now we get to play a 26 power Deadpool and a 26 power Taskmaster. I also wasn't sure if Taskmaster would have any weird interactions on Kamartage. This is my first game ever playing Taskmaster, so I just had to reread what the card said. Um, and after thinking about it for another second, I decide to battle in Wakanda just so that way my opponent can't Killmonger our Deadpool. And then uh, gonna go ahead and snap there to finish things off. My opponent does take Mojo World 
but we quite easily win both of the other locations here with Deadpool and Taskmaster on the final turn. So pretty sweet stuff. I figured we would win and it was just smart to play it a little bit safer. And then this was the second game that I played with this deck and things went equally well. You can see that our opening hand is much of the same cards. Though this time Deadpool is still in the deck, so we could potentially even buff that with Okoye too. We are going to have to avoid Nowhere, and I believe we actually draw Deadpool on this uh, second turn, so we won't be able to Okoye it. Yeah, we do draw it here, and it's also Lemuria, so we will not be able to uh, Okoye, and we want to draw Deadpool next turn regardless, so that way we can knock you. But definitely some really, really good draws in my first two games here, both of them. Um, again, I think that I should Okoye into the open space, just so that way I leave Lemuria open, totally. But these were my first games with the deck, so still definitely learning some of those intricacies. And then we're going to get Monster Island as our last location. So I'm going to throw Nakia over there. Um, yeah, definitely a little bit awkward because now it's just going to be more difficult to Hulkbuster onto the Deadpool, but we'll still see what we are able to make happen here. We could do something a little bit different even, like we could have tried to Hulkbuster onto the monster, so that way we could have um, just Taskmaster that and grabbed a 15-15. That's definitely also a reasonable play, but I'm going to roll the die here and try to win this 50-50 with Deadpool. And what do you know, we get lucky yet again. Hulkbuster attaches on to the Deadpool. Um, so that works out really, really nicely for us. My opponent plays a Jubilee into Sunspot. Not super impressive. We can even Killmonger the Sunspot, and that is going to be enough to just make me snap. We are going to go for Bucky Barnes plus Deathlock, though, just to get a little bit more value. And then next turn, we'll be able to play the 18 power Deadpool, plus we'll also have an 18 power Taskmaster. So that is just going to be really strong in ensuring that we can win two separate lanes here to finish the game off definitely feeling good about this one. My opponent is going to magic, so that is going to complicate some things a little bit, but uh, that is actually just going to give us time to play Killmonger as well. So now we can play Deadpool plus Killmonger this turn. Uh, we could also go for Gamora or some other interesting combinations, but uh, I think that this is just going to be the best route for us. It'll kill their Sunspot, it'll kill our Deadpool, and I'm also trying to put us in a situation where we don't have priority on the last turn, that we're not winning going into the last turn, but I don't think there's actually a way to do it here. Um, so I just wind up, actually, I think I do throw the, oh no, I throw the Killmonger in Limbo. Okay, that's fine. Um, either way though, we are going to wind up winning because we're just gonna have uh, a bigger tiebreaker in Lemuria. My opponent goes for Iron Man on the last turn and then we blow up the Deadpool as well as their Sunspot. And they could potentially win in Lemuria for sure. So I was going to throw the Taskmaster into Limbo and create a 36 power Deadpool and Taskmaster 72 power on one turn pretty good stuff there that it would have been to end the game so my opponent concedes to the end of game cube doubling but i think we definitely had a really good shot there with 72 power all coming out in one turn i want to take a look at some other cards like carnage they can have some nice synergies in this deck. So Carnage consolidates all of your stats into one bigger unit, and that works really well with Taskmaster because you destroy three things in this case, and then you get an eight power unit, or in this case, a nine power unit because of Okoye. That allows Taskmaster to be a five energy, nine power unit in a different way. Again, this game isn't really a high roll. It's just a good example, I thought, of uh, just showing another 
another use you can have with Carnage. Uh, in my deck for this game, there was also a Jubilee. Uh, I wound up cutting that eventually uh, just for some more synergistic cards. That's why you don't see it in the final deck list on the side of the screen here. But Taskmaster, I thought, did a nice job in this game in the negative zone where you really only want to have one large unit. And obviously, the chance that it can high roll is really good, but if this is like a normal case scenario, still pretty good. Five energy for nine power. It's bigger than like Abomination, for instance. And now we are winning in the negative zone and we're winning in Isle of Silence. My opponent would need eight to win Isle of Silence or eight to tie, and they would need four just to tie the negative zone. So I feel pretty good about just throwing Gamora into the Strange Academy here. And now we are up in all three locations my opponent would have to flip two of these locations and I don't think they're going to be able to uh, Captain America is enough to flip the other one but they weren't going to have a 3-8 in the Isle of Silence there to win that so looking pretty good and that will be another win this deck has some other really cool synergies with the Taskmaster and we're going to take a look at another one of those synergies in this game this is also going to be a seven turn game because of Limbo here and we've got a pretty good start here with Okoye, Nakia, some nice pumps to some of our future action that we will hopefully be able to make use of. I'm going for Okoye in Hellfire Club because we can't play Deadpool there. So just trying to keep the other two lanes open up as much as possible. And then we will get Sakaar, so we will wind up running out our Killmonger. A little bit annoying, but this is actually not going to be a Deadpool game, so it's not a huge deal. And my opponent gets Electro into Sakaar, which is probably an annoying thing for them as well. They are now only able to play one card per turn. I do really think about putting the Nakia into Sakaar because my opponent has a lizard there, uh, but ultimately just decide to throw the the uh, Nakia into the Hellfire Club because I do think I'm going to play Bucky Barnes plus Carnage next turn, and I think I'd like to eat some stuff up in the Hellfire Club instead. My opponent plays Cosmo into Limbo, so that will not be a location that we can uh, Deadpool in, but we could potentially just throw like a Deathlock in that location. Uh, though now that they've played Iron Man there. I think I'm probably just going to avoid that area. But we know that they're not going to be able to like remove Limbo or anything crazy like that. So I guess that's good for us. We are definitely winning the Hellfire Club. My opponent, we're going to let them have Limbo. So now it is just going to become a battle for Sakaar. And this is a little bit awkward because we want to develop into Sakaar so that we can battle against the Lizard. But Hulkbuster doesn't add anything to Sakaar, and neither does Deathlock in terms of adding more units. They'll both add a little bit more power. But what I'm thinking here is because we have both of these awkward and clunky draws in our hand, and I'm probably going to want to play them both, I think I should just start with the Deathlock in this scenario. It's going to kill the Killmonger, which is regrettable. Um, but then we can play the Hulkbuster on the Deathlock, whereas if we play the Hulkbuster first, then it won't make any sense to play the Deathlock after that, and we might not have a good play at all next turn. My opponent going to play Spectrum. All of their cards are ongoing here, so that adds a nice little bit of power to this location and all of a sudden we are down by eight in Sakaar so we are going to need some help to catch up here. I'm going to play the Forge plus Hulkbuster that's going to add 11 power to the location so that'll definitely help us catch up a little bit and my opponent probably isn't going to play in Sakaar this turn because it only has one more space open and they find a really good way to play more power into Sakaar by playing a Claw which will add five power to that location. Hulkbuster is going to attach itself onto Deathlock, which I did not realize how lucky it is because, like I said, we are going to draw the Taskmaster in this game. And now the Taskmaster will get to copy this huge 15 power Deathlock because Hulkbuster still counts as the last card that you play as far as Taskmaster concerns. So this worked out really, really well for us. My opponent is going to end things off with Ant man but then we are going to end things off by throwing a 15 power taskmaster and getting a surprise victory into Sakaar so really really strong stuff 
and uh, yeah, just a really, really cool interaction between Hulkbuster and Taskmaster that you can really make use of with this deck. I'm gonna showcase one more game here to round out the video, and this game also has some sweet Taskmaster interactions that we haven't seen yet, so it's a lot of fun. It's actually a rematch for me playing up against an opponent that just beat us with leader to steal my Deadpool on the final turn of the game. So that one hurt, but we are going to try to get some revenge here now. They're playing kind of like a discard reanimation deck and they discard death on the first turn. We're just gonna follow that up by playing in Okoye and honestly could have played this Okoye at any of the three locations, potentially want to leave open the Isle of Silence. I don't really care about their blade at all though because we've got Killmonger and I assume we'll probably play that before the game is over um, and then Westview is our second location so that one's kind of up in the air and uh, maybe for that reason we do just want to run out of Koye and leave a space open for Deadpool in the Isle of Silence but we actually don't even wind up drawing it so it's not a huge deal uh, doesn't really matter but there those are some things that you want to think about if you do play this deck or a similar Deadpool deck is just keeping those locations open. So my opponent's going to play Sunspot. That's just going to make this Killmonger even more juicy in our hand. And I think I'm going to run it out here. Um, we don't really have any other great play this turn. We could just play Bucky Barnes, though we don't have a way to kill Bucky Barnes yet. And Killmonger's just a good use of our energy for this turn. It's effectively a 3-8 because it's destroying Sunspot and Blade, and assumedly my opponent would even put more resources into Sunspot in a deck like this if they wanted to, like, Infinite or do something else like that. We could have held on to Killmonger for later to potentially play into Deadpool and um, let my opponent develop even more into Sunspot, as you see that they did that turn but I don't think that it is ultimately a huge deal and uh, this is still pretty strong for us. We're gonna wind up playing Bucky Barnes plus Forge on this turn and that will allow us to play a pretty big Gamora next turn. We'll just have to try to guess where my opponent is going to play. My opponent plays a Swordmaster on the Isle of Silence, discarding an Infinite, so I'm definitely happy that I have access to this Shang-Chi and we just have to get good guessing with this Gamora. And I think that my opponent is going to play into Monster Metropolis here, and I'm right. So now we get to play an absolutely massive Gamora bumped up by Forge and pumped up by Monster Metropolis. And the way that this works is Taskmaster will just copy the current power of the last card that you played. So Taskmaster gets to play 415 here pretty sweet stuff and if we had played it in the monster metropolis then it would have copied Gamora and then it would have stolen the buff from Gamora uh, but I just don't think that we need more help in the metropolis I think that we might just want some more help in the Isle of Silence I'm going to snap and my opponent is going to snap and it makes a lot of sense that they snap here because they have leader yet again and leader into strange academy means that they've got both of their lanes covered no matter where we play they will be able to win however taskmaster comes in and copies the power of the last card that they played which means it doesn't stay a 15 power card when they steal it it shrinks back down to two and allows us to find a pretty sweet win there. Okay, one final game. I just played this game last night and I actually delayed the whole video just so that way I could get this game included because it was such an insane high roll that I had to show it off here. Miniaturized Lab is going to be our first location, so don't wanna throw Deadpool in there. Uh, we'll just wind up using that as a location to throw either Forge or Okoye to do some setup stuff. And we are going to get Shadowland as location number two and I think that's good for us. Uh, my opponent plays a sunspot in the miniaturized lab. We're going to meet that with Okoye. They'll probably beat us with the sunspot but we could draw Killmonger or something later so I'm not super worried about the sunspot and then I feel like Shadowland is good for us because we can just blow up that shadow, that ninja with the deathlock. Uh, or any of our destroy effects in the deck, maybe uh, Carnage or something later on. So that's looking good for us. We're going to play Okoye. 
And location number three, this is where we really pop off, is Sinister London. So this is really, really insane for us. Now we get to Forge, which is going to create two copies of Forge, and then we're going to create a, we're gonna play a Deadpool, and that's going to make two five power copies of Deadpool. So that is enough for me to start snapping already. I think that we are definitely going to win this one, and uh, you'll, you'll see why in a second. Uh, we're gonna have the two five cost copies of Deadpool after the Forge, and then we're gonna be able to destroy both of them easily with the Deathlock, because Miniaturized Lab is locking down that first location. So now, we could play the Killmonger potentially too, uh, though I think that we just want to play the Deathlock first. Next turn, we could play Killmonger because we are going to generate a bunch of Deadpools this turn. So we are going to wind up having double Deadpool in our hand because Deathlock is going to destroy both of them here, and we are going to be winning in Shadowland, and we're going to be, well, not winning quite yet in Sinister London potentially, but we've got two now 10 power Deadpools in our hand. Next turn, we get to play Deadpool, Deadpool, Killmonger, destroy all four Deadpools and return four 20 power Deadpools to our hand. And I thought that was going to be enough, but Carnage is actually an even bigger high roll. So I start to reevaluate here. Do I really need to kill my opponent's Sunspot? And I don't think that it even matters. So I'm going to play Carnage. The reason that I do that is because that is going to uh, wind up destroying both of the Deadpools, and then it will be a nine power card, and then it will go over into the Shadowland, destroy three more cards, and go up to a 15 power Carnage. Uh, so it's just a little bit more synergistic with the Sinister London featured location. Clean up some of these spots, and that way next turn, we can drop four 20 power Deadpools on the final turn for 80 power, and with that, my opponent has seen enough and is going to retreat. But that would have been a really crazy end turn there to finish off the game with uh, 80 power in one turn. Pretty nutty stuff. So that is going to be it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this style of Marvel Snap content and want to see more in the future. But that is going to be it for me today. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'm no Lux Given. Peace.